Okay, folks, you know what this Sunday is. It's the big game. And I'm going to call it that because you know what? I don't want nobody to run after me by me saying the Right? So, with that being said, listen, I'm finna show you how to make an easy, over the top, and everybody's favorite. We making Philly cheese steak sliders. Let's get it. Okay, so look, before I, you know, go ahead and get started, I just want to give you guys a couple of options, right? This is what everybody know. When you think about sliders, everybody say King's Hawaiian, right? But check this out, folks. Somebody else is in the game. You got nature's own. Look, that's that butter, these them butter rolls, Brio style. Uh-oh, folks, we got some competition. Now, if you look over here, look, we got provolone, onion, bell pepper, some spices, butter. But you see this right here? This is what I want to show you. I put my steak inside of the freezer, right? I don't want it to be, you know, super hard, but I want you to pay attention to my finger. Look, when I push down like that, look, see how it holds that? This way, when I cut it, you know, thin slices, it's easier to cut. That's a little heads up, folks. You see that right there? Mm, I can't wait. All right, so the first thing I'm getting ready to do is, while this is still kind of like in this semi-froze state, I just want to cut a little small piece like this just to get it started, right? But you can see, if I hold it up like that, you see how it holds that? Still halfway kind of like frozen, right? This allows you to be able to cut something, a slice that is thin, right? You guys get it. Remember, just put it in your freezer. I put it in the freezer and it's probably been going for about, mm, about 45 minutes. It really depends on the thickness of your steak. You know what I mean? How cold your freezer is. And that's right. I know some of you guys get a freezer, you bring it home, you plug it up, you never make no adjustments. But this right here is the way you do it. Okay, so before we even, well, I'll go ahead and show you guys this right here. Look, this is what I mean, cut them down thin. You know what I mean? I probably should have let it stay in the freezer a little bit longer because as I was cutting, it starts to, you know, thaw out. Depends on what part you get. Fat, obviously, that right there is, you know, nice. But anyway, make a long story short. If you guys pay attention over here, now would be a great time for us to go ahead and preheat our oven. 350 degrees, right? Now, I didn't took the time. I've already started. I can start feeling the heat starting to come here. So let me explain to you guys how the cast iron works. Now, I'm going to just say this for those of you guys that didn't know. The cast iron, this is the original non-stick pan, right? When you season them and get them right, they work perfectly. Nothing to stick to it. So, got my heat on the bottom. It, you know, heats up right here and then it kind of like just pushes out. A true heads up is whenever you guys are using the cast iron, if you put it in the oven, you can go ahead and heat it up. It'll be nice and evenly hot, you know, when you start. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just take this here, drop this in like that. Now notice I didn't put no oil down at the bottom, right? You know why? Because we're gonna get some fat right here. So we just dropped that in there. But what you wanna do is you wanna get this here. If you guys have been following me for a minute, you know I like my square edge, wooden spoon, really. Which really is, is uh, this right here is like bamboo, you know what I mean? So we'll start letting this go. This will bring the heat on our skillet down a little bit on our pan, you know what I mean? Uh, but don't trip, because that was nice and cold, right? Now, I'm going to take this, move this out the way. All right, and now we're getting ready to prep, you know, our veggies, right? So I cut it down like this, right? Then I just take this, take my knife, you know, cut the little web out. Do the same thing over here. Right? Then I just get over the trash. Right? And then just pop it straight through. Now I'll go ahead and just make a cut. Then we can open it up. It's okay if it snaps. It's up to you guys. If you want to take some of this off, you can. You know, some of the webbing. I do. And so here, it's the same thing that you guys always seen. You know what I mean? It just makes it easier for me. If I take the whole bell pepper, do it the way you guys just saw me do it, you know what I mean, to cut it down like that, to get it like this, right? It makes it much easier for me to dice this way, right? Then just put them all together like this, and then it's up to you how you wanna, you know, have it. You wanna dice for the taste, you know what I mean, or do you wanna have the texture? But if you ask me, we doing both. That's a good size dice right there, right? Let me just finish this, then we move over to that onion. So we cooking this down, it's starting to look real nice. You know what I mean, this is what we want. Now, you remember we have some spices. Don't forget, you guys can go to my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com to get the full printable, you know, downloadable recipe. Let me just start adding my, my spices, all right? Now we just mix this all together, all right? Let this continue to cook a little bit longer. But you remember how I said we didn't need to put no oil in there? You see how the fat from 
Oh, and if I didn't say nothing, that was ribeye, folks. You know what I mean? But you guys can use whatever steak you want to use. But to me, I love to use ribeye. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my King's Hawaiian, right? So this part, real simple. You want to get yourself a bread knife, right? What we're going to do is we just want to cut them in half. We want to have a bottom and we want to have a top, right? So if you're using a bread knife, you let the knife do the work, folks. You don't have to like push the knife or nothing like that. Just go ahead and let it do its thing. That's why I serrate it. It'll just kind of like cut if you just saw back and forth. Lightly move it forward and look at that. You know my Pyrex and what I did was I sprayed it. That's what you guys are seeing. You know, Pam, right? So let me get underneath this. Let's separate these tops. I'll just set that there for now. We'll take this here and we'll just drop this right here. Real simple. Now, I'm going to turn off my fire just for one second. Get my tongs and we finna take our meat and we finna just sprinkle that on top of it. Now you see this right here? Ooh, ooh. Look at that. You see that? That's what you want to have. Now I want you guys to pay attention and look at this right here. You see that? It's been seasoned up. Now you guys can do, put whatever seasoning you want on here. It's really about making just some good tasting food, right? But I gave you just the just, and what you guys didn't see is I hit it with a little bit of my seasoning also, but I want you to look at that. Look at how tender that is right there. Now, just go ahead and just start adding this right here on top, right? Now, when you get you guys get back get a chance to look back in that uh in the pan, you'll see it left a lot of fat, a lot of season. You guys are gonna like the way my cast iron is looking. That all right there is monumental, right? Because listen, we finna go ahead and you know start our veggies. And what better than to have, you know, green bell pepper and onion. Bringing our pan back up to, you know, temp, right? You see that right there? That's what I wanna see. Now, because I diced these so thin, you know what I mean? You don't have to give these a head start like I normally do. So you see all of that? Now we're gonna go ahead and get this going. And if you would like, you know, if, if you've been following me, you know I like that infused uh, olive oil, right? So I put a little bit of that garlic infused inside. And let that pick up all of the fine and anything else that's left in the pan. The pan. Turn off my fire. Now you guys cook your veggies down like how you like them, but this right here, where the onion's starting to grill, I still got color on my bell peppers, but they nice and, you know, they starting to soften up this over here. All right. Now, we're just gonna start adding this over the top. Look at that right there, folks. And you know what? You know you cannot have nothing called Philly anything without having that provolone. Right, so let's get it over here. Let's make sure we got maximum coverage. And even if we don't, you can always add more to it, right? So we just do it like this. I take my tops, bring them over here like this, right? Don't worry about it, if they fall off, we gonna cut them anyway. So I'm just gonna move these over here like this. And what I'm gonna do is just lightly cover this with a little bit of this mayo. Now, talk to me about this right here. Let's get ahead and get everybody started right now talking about who got the best mayo. Is it Duke's? Is it Best Foods? Right? Is it Hellman's? You guys let me know. You're probably going to say what it is, what's, you know, key to your region. You know what I mean? But mayo is if you like it, I love it. You just seen the whole thing. Now, look, I took that butter, right? Just melted that. Now, I'm going to take some of this onion. Put some of that in here. Let it give off some of that flavor, you know, with it. Now notice I left some on my board right there. That's okay. Cause what we're gonna do is we just finna paint this over here like this. Then I'm gonna sprinkle some of those that are left over on the board. You know what I mean? I'm gonna sprinkle that on top. And then we finna put these in the oven, get this cheese to melt. And somebody answer me this down in the comment section below. How can whenever you start coming up with that money, the money shots, them, them, I don't know, like, anything that you know that's gonna taste good, your voice get quiet. Okay, once you got everything done, go ahead and get yourself some foil. I'm just gonna lightly, you know, cover the top of it. That's all you need, right? We going in for 10 minutes, then we are gonna remove it, then we are gonna let it just like toast up the top just a little bit. That could take anywhere between five, seven, or even maybe another 10 minutes. It depends on your oven. Now, that being said, I done said a lot, just to keep it so that I'm not over talking. Put that in there like that. Now we set a timer, 10 minutes. Oh, 
Okay, so the way you guys seen it pool, you know, I put like a few extra layers of that provolone on there. But you know what? It'd be best for you so your friends don't come and tear up the whole thing. Just cut them, you know what I mean, and set them off to the side. Stack them up how you want to do them or leave them inside of this and let them get it. Listen, I'm not finna over talk it. I got this one right here. I'm finna eat, folks. <laughs> Cheers. Super easy to make, folks. You guys gotta try it if you haven't already. But I want you guys to talk to me down in the comment section below, right? Listen, I want you to talk to me about this. Listen, we tried to keep it like a little bit more sort, sort of like original with the, you know, Philly cheese steak, right? But what else could you have done to make this over the top? You ask me, I could have put some bacon on here. You know what I mean? I could have did the, uh, the steak and some bacon fat. There's a few other things I could have done, you know what I mean? Uh, to be honest with you, I like that holy trinity, you know what I mean? Just to put some uh, celery in there. Just all kind of ways. Now that I got you guys brain thinking, I can't wait to read the comments. Now, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. You know what? I'm finna be quiet. I'm finna put these up, you know what I mean? Because I got about four more batches of these to make. Guess what, folks? I'm out. Peace.